For me personally, two years ago, I joined a class of uh, 14 astronaut candidates, uh, nine Americans, two Canadians, and three Japanese. And these people are just an amazing bunch of people. But what I think is, uh, what is really neat to think about here is the backgrounds of these people. We have a full cross-section. We have uh, pilots, which uh, you might have heard of before being astronauts, doctors. We have a number of doctors. We have pure scientists, pure engineers, biologists, army officers. Really, the point here is it doesn't matter what you do. It's kind of how you do it in life. Thinking about the future, you know, for me personally, while I'm so passionate about space exploration is because I really think when we set a common goal, like going to a place like Mars or putting humanity, making a permanent human presence on the moon, when we set a goal like that and we bring the greatest minds of our countries together is when we accomplish the most amazing things. You know, technology for, for the world and certainly for Canada has allowed us to um, colonize uh, the greater part of our planet and certainly make our lives better. But really, when you look at it, if where we are today, we're counting on the advancement of technology to save not only the planet, but probably humanity in the future. And it's a constant investment that we need to be making and thinking about. So we're training to go here right now, the International Space Station. This thing's the size of a football field. And the living compartments, which are kind of this T-shaped area, are about the size of a five-bedroom home. And we've had humans living on the space station now for 10 years, over 10 years. And typically on space station, we have six astronauts uh, living and working in space. And we're focused on uh, a lot of scientific research, but as well, just how we're going to live and work in space for long durations to enable us to go to places beyond low Earth orbit, uh, the moon, and onto Mars. So if you're going to be an astronaut on the space station, this is one of the key uh, areas of training, robotics. And this is kind of near and dear to our hearts as Canadians because we built the Canada Arm too, the robotic arm you're looking at. So I've been working on learning how to operate the Canada Arm. And what's neat is, is ha has been watching the evolution of Canadian robotics in space. And Canada Arm 2 was kind of initially designed to build the station and to help us maintain it. But now a new role has developed for Canada Arm 2 and it has to do with this vehicle right here. This is the Japanese HTV. It's one of a few vehicles like this. And they have the capability to bring uh, supplies to the space station, but the vessel is unmanned, and it's not able to dock to the space station with its own systems. All it can do is fly up, get close to the space station, and then we end up reaching out with a Canada arm and grabbing it and docking it to the space station. And this is a really key point because you don't want to mess this up because if, uh, if the Canada arm fails and this spacecraft doesn't end up getting docked, then all our food and water goes away and then we have six very unhappy astronauts. <clears throat> the reason it's risky, you guys have seen the Canada Arm grab things in space before, satellites with the space shuttle, etc. The reason it's different is because you could always move the space shuttle away from the object. And now, the space station, it being as large as it is, you can't move the space station away when things go wrong. And so this is a very critical operation that uh, Canada has undertaken and we've done a phenomenal job. We've already done this twice successfully and uh, they're putting a lot of faith in Canada to get this done. It's really impressive. 